Hello, this is the Connect team. In our previous video, we showed you how to create shoes using shoe lasts. This time, we'll guide you through the process of completing shoes using the newly released shoe outsoles. The outsole is the bottom part of the shoe that touches the ground when worn. It plays a key role in both comfort and the overall look of the design. The new outsoles are available for both men and women. The men's collection includes six flat style outsoles, while the women's collection offers nine flat style and four heel style outsoles, totaling 13 unique options. These outsoles are designed to attach directly to shoe uppers you've created with the shoe lasts, helping you achieve a more realistic and structured final result. You can download the outsoles from the Connect tab in Close Library or from the link in the video description. For details on how to build and register the final shoes as accessories, please refer to the tutorial video linked below. Now, let's get started and create sneakers, heels, and heel drop shoes using the new shoe outsoles. Let's take a quick look at how to download the shoe outsole from Connect and what's included in the file. First, you can access shoe outsoles directly through Close Library. Go to the Trim category, then click the Connect Asset tab. From there, use the search bar to find and instantly download the outsole you need. You can also download the file locally from Connect. After unzipping the folder, simply drag and drop it into Close to start using it. The downloaded zip file contains two key files, a shoe outsole trim file and a project file with an outsole avatar and pre-drawn 3D pen lines. If you're using the penline version, just open the project file inside the folder. We'll show you how to work with it in the next part of this tutorial. Now let's load the shoe outsole trim file into the upper shoe project we previously created using a shoe last. You can drag and drop the outsole trim file into an empty space in the 3D window, either from the Clo library or from a local folder where it was downloaded. Once loaded, the outsole will automatically appear in the same position as the shoe last, aligned to the ground. By default, the outsole is positioned on the left side. So if your upper was created on the right side, you'll need to use the mirror paste function to flip the upper accordingly. To do this, select all upper patterns, right click on them in either the 3D or 2D window, and choose copy. Then, right click on an empty area in the window and select mirror paste. You'll now see a mirrored copy of the upper, aligned with the outsole. Now, let's return to the shoe outsole. At this stage, the outsole and upper patterns are not yet attached. If you register the shoe in the state, the trim outsole will not be included in the accessory file. You'll use the glue function to attach the outsole trim to the upper patterns. Glue allows trims to be bonded to garment patterns, and it's essential to use this function to ensure that the outsole is registered as part of the final shoe accessory. To make this easier, press the number zero on your keyboard to switch to the bottom view. Then, click once on the outsole in the 3D window. You'll see a gizmo appear. On the gizmo's control panel in the top right, click the third icon to activate glue mode. With glue mode activated, hover your mouse over the pattern. You'll see a preview showing how the outsole will attach to the pattern. Use this guide to align the outsole, then click the pattern to glue it in place. If needed, use the gizmo tool to fine tune the outsole's rotation or position for a better fit. To adjust the height of the upper, select all patterns and use the gizmo to move them upward along the Y axis. Next, let's add a dummy to ensure a stable simulation after registering the shoe. Since the dummy creation process is the same as in previous tutorials, we'll go through this part quickly. If you need a detailed explanation, please refer to the tutorial link in the video description. We recommend starting this video from the point where the saved dummy file is imported. After importing the dummy pattern, adjust its position, then delete the insole pattern from the dummy and sew it to the insole pattern of the upper. Next, select all dummy patterns, set the collision value to 15, and apply strengthen. 
because the outsole trim may affect the simulation, we'll also deactivate it. To do this, right-click on the outsole trim and select Deactivate from the menu. Then, freeze the upper patterns to keep their shape. Now, simulate the dummy. You'll see that the simulation runs smoothly without interference from the outsole. If any part of the upper is sticking out, adjust its position so it stays within the dummy during simulation. Once the dummy fully wraps the sneakers, it should be invisible. To do this, select the fabric applied to the dummy and set its opacity value to zero. This completes the entire shoemaking process in Clo. Now, save your project file. Let's align the sneaker with the Clo avatar so we can check the fit and appearance before registering it as an accessory. First, clear the current workspace to start with a clean scene, then open the Clo female avatar. Since we're working with sneakers, we'll need to set the avatar to a heel down position. To do that, delete the default heel shoes the avatar is currently wearing. Next, import the saved sneaker project. At this point, you'll notice that the sneaker and avatar positions do not match. We'll adjust the alignment during the accessory registration process in the next step. Now that we've attached the outsole to the upper, let's finalize the process by registering the finished shoe as a Clo accessory file. The registration method is the same as in the shoe last tutorial, so feel free to refer to that video if you need a detailed walkthrough. First, select all the sneaker patterns. Then, right-click on the selected patterns in the 3D window and go to Convert and click to Avatar Accessory. In the Register Accessory window, set the accessory type to Shoes and Flats. Under Object, select Patterns and make sure that no pattern pieces are missing. Next, use the gizmo to adjust the position of the shoe so that it aligns properly with the avatar's foot. To automatically create the opposite side, check the option Mirror Creation. This will generate a mirrored copy of the shoe on the other foot. Once the alignment looks good, click Save to complete the process and register the shoe as a Clo accessory file. Finally, let's load the registered accessory and apply it to the Clo avatar. From the Clo library, open the Mia avatar, then load the .zax file you saved earlier. Once loaded, the avatar will automatically switch to a heel down pose and you'll see the sneakers applied correctly to the feet. At this point, you can use any of Clo's pose or motion files and the sneakers will move naturally with the avatar. Try loading a pose file and you'll see your custom sneaker staying on as the avatar changes position. Now, try designing your own variety of shoes using the shoe outsoles. Heel outsole files can also be accessed directly from Clo's library. Simply go to the trim category, click the Connect Asset tab, and use the search bar to find and download the outsole you need. Please note that heel outsoles are only provided in trim file format, as there's no need to create an insole pattern for them. Let's now load the project you created using the shoe last and apply a heel outsole to it. For a detailed guide on how to create heels, please refer to the shoe last tutorial. With only the upper pattern visible in the 3D window, drag and drop the heel outsole trim into the scene. By default, the heel outsole appears on the left side in its original position. To align it with your upper design, select the Move tool, click the outsole, and the gizmo will appear. You can now adjust the position and height using the gizmo. To scale the outsole on the Y-axis, click the scale icon on the gizmo and drag the Y-axis arrow to resize the heel as needed. You can also input an exact value. In the Object Browser, under the Trim tab, select the loaded outsole trim. In the Property Editor, you'll see the Scale option. Uncheck Lock Aspect Ratio, then modify only the Y value. Let's enter 90 millimeters for the Y axis. As you can see, the heel outsole has now stretched vertically to the desired height. Once you've scaled the outsole to match your design, 
it's time to attach it to the insole pattern using the glue function. This ensures the outsole will be registered as part of the final shoe. To begin, press the number zero on your keyboard to switch to bottom view. Then, click the heel outsole, bottom surface, to activate the gizmo. Click the third icon on the gizmo's toolbar to enable glue mode. Now, hover your mouse over the insole pattern. You'll see a preview of how the outsole will attach, including direction and position. Once you're satisfied with the placement, click the insole pattern to glue the outsole trim in place. You can then click the outsole trim again to further fine tune its position using the gizmo. Just like in the sneaker workflow, create a dummy pattern and save your final shoe as a .zax file. In this section, we'll introduce how to work with a heel drop-shaped outsole in Kello. Typically, outsole patterns are created based on the last shape. However, since this outsole features a heel drop structure with a sloped and uneven bottom, a slightly different approach is required. A heel drop structure is thicker at the heel than at the forefoot, which means that creating the outsole based on the last may result in a mismatch with the actual outsole shape. So in this workflow, we'll create the outsole pattern directly from the outsole file and then connect the upper patterns accordingly. By doing this, we can generate an accurate outsole pattern that matches the actual 3D shape and naturally reflects the unique silhouette of the heel drop design. Now let's take a look at how to import the outsole project file into Kilo and extract the outsole pattern. First, purchase the Chunky Boots outsole item from Connect. Download the purchased outsole file locally and save it. The downloaded file will be provided as a compressed folder. Inside the folder, you'll find two files, a shoe outsole trim file, a project file containing the 3D pen line drawn on the outsole OBJ, imported as an avatar file. To easily create an outsole pattern for the sloped heel drop structure, we'll use the avatar file that already includes the 3D pen line. After extracting the zip file, load the avatar file from the folder. You'll see that a 3D pen line has already been drawn to match the actual outsole shape, making it ready for pattern extraction. Click on the flatten tool, then select the area where the 3D pen line is drawn and press enter on the keyboard to generate the outsole pattern. Once the outsole pattern is created, change its particle distance to 5 and set the collision thickness to 1. Then, use the gizmo in the 3D window to position the pattern as close as possible to the outsole for proper alignment with the upper pattern. Finally, freeze the pattern. Now, let's load the file created using the shoe last and apply the heel drop outsole. With other outsole types, we usually don't need to simulate after attaching the upper pattern and trim. However, for a heel drop outsole, simulation is necessary to properly fit the upper to the sloped sole. So we'll use the project file that contains both the upper pattern and shoe last. For details on creating the upper pattern, please refer to the shoe last tutorial. After adding the upper pattern and shoe last, they will be positioned based on the ground and overlap with the outsole. Next, delete the sole pattern from the upper pattern you created earlier. Select both the last and the upper pattern and use the gizmo to reposition them so they don't intersect with the outsole and can simulate properly. Since the previously imported outsole avatar file was only used to extract the sole pattern, you can now delete it before continuing. Then, so the flattened sole pattern extracted from the 3D pen line to the upper pattern in the correct position. Finally, select all upper patterns, apply the strengthen function to prevent distortion, and run the simulation. You'll see that the upper pattern simulates smoothly, conforming to the shape of the heel drop outsole. Now that the upper pattern has been simulated to match the heel drop outsole shape, let's import the outsole as a trim and attach it to the upper pattern. Heel drop style shoes also require a dummy pattern for stable simulation with the garment. For detailed instructions on creating a dummy, please refer to the shoemaking tutorial video linked in the description.
Once the dummy has been applied and the simulation is complete, save the shoe as a Zax file using the same method as shown in the sneakers workflow. Then, load the saved shoe and apply it to the avatar to finish. This concludes the guide on how to create shoes using three different types of outsoles. Use the provided outsole files to create a variety of custom footwear designs.